Hello everyone, this is Geo Echidna, and I'd like to present Weapons of Battlefield 1 in real life, the Gewehr 98. Since Battlefield 1's launch in 2016, the Gewehr 98 has proved to be quite popular with the scout class and multiplayer, well regarded for its precision, range, and high muzzle velocity. But how does its digital representation in Battlefield 1 compare to the massively influential and successful design of the actual rifle? Before we answer this question, let's go over the historical context and background of this iconic German warhorse. Let's rewind to the mid-1890s. The official service rifle of the Imperial German military was the Gewehr 88, also referred to as the Model 1888 Commission Rifle. The Gewehr 88 was sort of rushed out the door by a military design committee to compete with France in their new Lebelle Model of 1886, the first military rifle adopted that was designed for use with smokeless powder cartridges. Smokeless gunpowder was a revolutionary design that was cleaner burning, less corrosive, allowed for a vastly greater effective range for projectiles, and didn't emit a massive cloud of white smoke every time the weapon was discharged. The advantages of smokeless gunpowder were numerous and obvious, and virtually every nation on Earth rushed to develop or otherwise acquire weapons using this innovative new propellant. This frantic dash to remain competitive on the world stage led to some rushed designs, and Germany's Gewehr 8 was no exception. While it was still pretty advanced at the time, it left a lot to be desired, suffering from reliability problems and even legal issues, since the rifle borrowed several elements from other rifle designs still under patent. The Gewehr 88 was essentially a Frankenstein monster of sorts, that incorporated several good ideas but executed most of them pretty poorly, so the German military began to seek a replacement. What they ultimately chose was a rifle from the brilliant firearms designer Paul Mauser, what would eventually become the Gewehr 98. Paul Mauser first achieved success with the Model of 1871 rifle, which he developed with his brother Wilhelm. He would produce several variants and export versions throughout the years, even after his brother's death in 1882. However, despite Mauser's previous success in Germany, he was not actually involved at all with the development of the Gewehr 88, a fact which annoyed him greatly. Fuck you! But by 1895, Paul Mauser had achieved international recognition and acclaim for his wildly successful smokeless series of rifles, beginning with the Belgian contract model of 1889. Not only did he have a more impressive resume by this point, but his newest design met all the criteria for Germany's desired replacement rifle. The Gewehr 98 was officially adopted in 1898, and proved to be a massive success, not only in Germany, but around the entire world. From the introduction of the Lebel 1886 and smokeless gunpowder to the turn of the 20th century, it was a pretty magical time for rifle development. No one really knew what the fuck they were doing, and everyone just kind of made shit up as they went along. Paul Mauser figured it out faster than most, at least regarding smokeless bolt-action rifles. His model of 1889 provided him with a solid template that he would continually refine throughout the 1890s, eventually culminating into the Gewehr 98. The Gewehr 98 was the ultimate evolution of the Mauser design, and even today, the 98 pattern system is still the basis of the majority of bolt-action rifles in production. Okay, cool, but how does it work, and why is it considered to be so good? The Gewehr 98 used what is called a cock-on open system, in which the firing pin is cocked upon the initial opening of the bolt. This differs from the cock-on-close system Mauser used on his earlier models, in which the firing pin spring is compressed and cocked upon the closure of the bolt instead. This system was used on rifle patterns like the Lee Enfield and the Arisaka. I personally prefer cock-on-close because it's far less tiring to operate than cock-on-open designs. However, I do think the cock on open system is slightly safer and more mechanically sound, and it also allows you to quickly recock the pin if you have a dud round, which was common for military ammunition of this era. The Gewehr 98's bolt is also a very strong design, with two locking lugs at the front and one at the rear. This particular Gewehr 98 was produced at the Mauser factory back in 1916, and even over a century later it still functions safely and as intended. Another positive aspect of the Gewehr 98's bolt is that it's a controlled feed design. 
Controlled feeding is when the extractor catches onto the rim or extractor groove of a cartridge case and controls it for the entire duration of the rifle's operating cycle. Many rifles of this era were push-feed designs, such as the Gewehr 88, where the extractor only locks onto the cartridge case when the round is fully chambered. Controlled feeding is often considered to be a more positive and reliable method of feeding and extraction, and the system was pretty much perfected in the Gewehr 98. So, the Gewehr 98 in real life is a well-designed battle implement, but what about its digital representation in Battlefield 1? People who don't know firearms history probably gravely underestimate just how ubiquitous these things were at one point in history. Yet the Gewehr 98 was rarely seen in video games up until the release of Battlefield 1 in 2016. One of the only notable standalone games that featured it was the underrated Peter Jackson's King Kong, based on the 2005 movie of the same name. And even then, the rifle was incorrectly portrayed as a semi-auto, presumably for gameplay purposes. The only comparable inclusion of the 98 in a game until Battlefield 1 was in 2015's Verdun, a far more niche and hardcore World War I game. The Gewehr 98 in this game has a high polygon count and looks fantastic. Everything is proportionally correct and the lighting effects are just beautiful. The in-game model will also get gradually more and more money as you crawl along the ground, and in rainy weather conditions the rifle will accumulate drops of water in real time. The animation is also smooth and accurate to the real firearm. Here's a footage comparison of how the Gewehr 98 functions in Battlefield 1 versus real life. There is one animation oversight I'd like to point out, and it's how your player character looks down the sights of the in-game model. The standard real-life Gewehr 98 has a blade front post and a rear Lungavazia sight, which is often referred to as a roller coaster sight due to its unique appearance. 
Your avatar doesn't line up these sights at all, and in real life the blow would impact much higher than he'd want it to, and almost undoubtedly miss. This is what the sight picture looks like on a real Gewehr 98. Apart from that though, the animations are uniformly excellent, and the level of detail is top notch. Alright, so the in-game Gewehr 98 looks good, but how does it compare to handling the real thing? The Battlefield series since the beginning has always tried to create a good mix of realism and arcadey sensibilities, and Battlefield 1 is no exception. While there are realistic mechanics, like accurate muzzle velocities, bullet drop, and suppression, you can still use the Gewehr 98 and other scout rifles far more aggressively than you could in real life. 95% of the time I use the Gewehr 98, I use the standard infantry variant, which allows me to play the objective as an aggressive scout. Contrary to popular opinion, you absolutely can do well and even top the scoreboard in this role if you get good at it. The 98 has a high rate of fire for a bolt action, and follow-up shots are fast. I mean, don't get me wrong, you're not exactly going to be clearing up bunkers with this thing, and if someone gets the drop on you, you're pretty much fucked, but the 98 is far more versatile than you probably think it is. With K bullets, it can be used to finish off armored cars and tanks, in addition to carrying out good old-fashioned long-range sniping. It's even good at taking down planes. You're goddamn right. While its slow rate of fire due to its manual operation handicaps it somewhat, if used smartly, the Gewehr 98 will serve you and your team well. However, in real life, the Gewehr 98 was far less friendly to its user. While it's undoubtedly a high-quality, well-designed firearm, it is absolutely a product of its time. The 98 is a long, heavy bastard of a gun that is hard to hold steady from a standing position, something that only gets harder the longer you have to do it. Despite its weight and length, it also has harsh recoil, and after 20 rounds or so, your shoulder will start to ache. Unless you're a god, you're not exactly going to be nailing 300 meter headshots while standing up. These things are also very tiring to operate. Because of its manual bolt action nature, you have control over the entire operating cycle of the rifle, and working the bolt dozens of times during a battle would be fucking exhausting. The in-game gun is thankfully far easier to use, which is good because I play video games to have fun, not to fucking suffer. At the end of the day, the Gewehr 98 in Battlefield 1 might not be the most realistic depiction of this rifle in a game, but it is a joy to use, and an effective tool for the scout class if you put in the effort. Alright, that pretty much sums it up. If you like what you see here, please leave a comment below and click the bell to receive notifications about my new videos. Thanks for watching. Geo Echidna, signing off.